Hey folks, how you doing? Welcome to Well Today. Um, it's a nice, beautiful winter day. So, um, I figured out we discuss something that that's you know substantive to the days and the times that we're in right now. And you know, there's something's kind of interesting that I've been um kind of working with, and I know other folks have been working with it and everything. And that's that's using our AI technologies in our daily work and in our daily processes. Now, I've um, written a series of different kind of books over the past few years. And as, as somebody who's really just kind of started, you know, into this writing thing just over the past um, six, seven years or whatever, um, I've really discovered, you know, an affinity towards, you know, different styles of writing, you know, different forms of literature, whether, you know, whether it's, you know, long form or short form and whether it's, you know, um, poetic or whether, it's, you know, just different versions of it and everything. And I've come to um, recognize over the past few years that, you know, it's, it's very enjoyable to just use it as exercise, you know, in the writing process. You know, I've known, you know, several people who have written, you know, different types of books, whether it's self-help books, whether it's, you know, um, you know, instructional books, whether it's, you know, informative, whether it's autobiographical or whether it's, whether it's, you know, you know, you know, a novel or, or fiction or nonfiction. You know, I know several different, different people that have written all kinds of different books, but now we have, you know, a lot of different tools that we are able to use. And so I just kind of wanted to have a conversation real quick today about, you know, the different tools that we can use to help us with our writing. If you're a writer, if you're not a writer, if you're thinking about becoming a writer, if you're thinking about getting into writing, or you're doing it just as leisure, you know, activity or, you know, amateur, or whether you're a professional. You know, one of the things that, you know, I've been working, you know, for the past, you know, a few months, just utilizing some of the different tools that are available now. And, you know, it really, it really, it's really neat as a, as a writer to have these tools that are at our disposal. And so I just want to kind of, you know, it's kind of run down a few things. Now, before, you know, before the 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 chat GPT craze, you know, of the past few months, you know, there's there's been, you know, a few different kind of AI technologies that, that were available, not nearly as sharp. And there was just other tools, you know, other, you know, audio or video tools that are, you know, speech to text and so forth that were able to be used. But now as we've entered into this, you know, you know, point of, uh, you know, different forms of AI. I just kind of want to discuss some of the different things that are available, you know, that I personally use and so forth. And you have a couple of different examples. I just finished two new books recently, um, children's books um, that, 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 you know, we've made available to eBooks that I used, you know, AI with and in, in helping to develop with, you know, not, not just in the writing, but also in the illustration. So I think it's kind of, it's kind of really fun. It's kind of neat to be able to use um, some of the technologies available. Now, some of the technologies that I use on a, on a regular basis and that I've used to try to kind of help, you know, construct some of these newer books and so forth. And even, even as far as, you know, going back and revisiting some of my old um, um, literature that I've written and so forth, mostly with the illustrations, because there are some technologies that are really interesting. Like I like I, I like a nice um there's a Pixar um AI that you know you can use to help, you know, you type in the picture, you know, the description of the picture that you want and it'll uh, produce, you know, as best as it can. I mean, there's still a lot of kinks to be worked out, a lot of bugs to be worked out, you know, in these technologies. But you using them, as we're using them, <clears throat> we're helping to develop the technologies. But you type in a description of a picture that you want. Now, whether it's Pixar, whether it's Dolly, whether it's um, um, U.com, you know, and there's you know several others. But these are just a few of the ones that I'm that I've been using and playing with here lately. But you type in a description of a picture, and it produces a picture of you know, as best it can of what you typed in. Now, some of them are really obscure. That whether they're blurred or <laughs> whether you know you know you type in for if, especially if it's a person. You know, you have to really be, you know, they'll have three hands or they might have three arms or something. You know, you really, because what the AI does is it extrapolates from all the, you know, information that it has available, you know, on the internet. And it'll just basically mishmash a picture together based upon the information that you gave it. So a lot of times, you know, you'll have a picture and you'll look at the picture and you'll be like, oh, that's a neat picture. But if you're not being careful, you know, be like, oh, that person only has four fingers or that person has 
six fingers, or that person has three arms, or that person has three legs, or why does that person have two noses or something? You know, <laughs> but it's, it's interesting as you're playing with the technology. You know, you have to be you have to be aware. You have to you know say okay. You know, this is something that's is, is still being formed and everything. But you and you have to you know you have to initiate the action of working with and playing with these technologies in order to help them refine your process. And so whether it's in developing pictures or even developing, um, you know, written word, because here's the thing, you know, some of the things that I use it, you know, with like um, chat GPT, I'll make up a template of, you know, the things that I want to talk about the topics. Basically, I'll make out, you know, several, you know, description lines of what I want, you know, to convey, you know, I'll write those out myself. I'll put them through chat GPT and it will formulate, it'll formulate a story and then I'll go back in and I'll edit it and I'll, I'll retool it and I'll restructure it, you know, myself. And then, and I might even take that at that point and then run it back through it again. You know, what this does, this gives you, this gives you a in-house editor, I guess, so to say, you know, as opposed to, you know, this is something that, you know, usually would, you know, do a first draft, you know, um, Go over it yourself and then, you know, give it to an editor or give it to somebody else. Let them read it. Let them, you know, edit, put some edits in and then give it back to you. You rewrite it, resubmit it. You might do this four or five times, just depending upon whatever you're writing. Well, now we have technology where you can do this, you know, in a matter of minutes, you know, hours or whatever. And you can sculpt out, you know, your writing, you know, and you can send it back to editing, you know, <laughs> back and forth, back and forth. And I've done this a few times. And I mean, it's. It's very interesting as it helps to refine it, but you still have to do the work, though. You still have to do the work. You still have to, you know, if you're a writer. Now, if you're somebody, you know, just just doing something just to get it done and get it out of the way, I, you know, but I would advise, you know, definitely go back, you know, you know, edit it, reread it, give it somebody else, let them reread it. But as a writer, this is an awesome way to help you, you know, add velocity to your process and also gives you a chance to really sharpen a lot of other tools. Because here's the thing, I've written, you know, a few things and, you know, the way that, depending upon your writing style, how you're, you know, where's it coming from? Are you writing like you're talking? You know, a lot of times, you know, when I write, sometimes, a lot of times I'll write as I speak, you know, and that's not always the best way to, to write because, you know, everybody can't comprehend, <laughs> you know, you're like, uh, I don't, like, I don't get your point here. I don't, I don't see what your point is. Now, sometimes I do that intentionally, but sometimes I, you know, I want, you know, a lot of clarity. So what I do now is I'm able to, you know, write out a text and then, you know, put it through, you know, whether it's chat GPT or whether it's KO or whether it's, you know, another different AI and I'll put it through this other AI and I'll let it, you know, restructure it. And it's the same thing that I said in my initial article or what have you, you know, but it, it'll refine it and structure it in a way that's more, that's more of a, of a, of a, you know, common vernacular that's that's easy that's easier to read for more people to to comprehend because what you're seeking is comprehension, you know, at different levels and depending upon what your audience is. And so this gives you a great opportunity to use a tool, which as a writer, this is like invaluable. But now to those who, who don't, you know, who don't write, you know, you might just, you know, use it here or there or whatever. But as for a writer, I'm gonna tell you, this is I mean it's like a kid in a candy store. This is this is like awesome. I mean, there's nothing worse than write, writing out, you know, several paragraphs and then going back to reread them and, you know, in your in your own mind, you know, it's like, does that sound right? But here's the thing, and I'm going to go back a little bit. Even before this AI, one of the tools that I use, it, you know, when I when I write something, I'll, I'll a lot of times I'll I'll um cuz we have some, you know, technology even before now that that we can use that um, you know, I have software that'll read it back to me. That'll read it back to me in, 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 in a different voice and whether a male voice or a female voice, but it'll read it back to me so I can hear what I've written. And up until now, up until I've had this AI, I would use that to really go back and do a lot of my edits so I can hear, I can hear somebody else read, you know, the text that I've written and so forth. And that's very helpful as well. So, so that's a that's that's a tool that I've been using for a while as well. So when I when I when I implement those tools along with these tools, I tell you what, it's very exciting to be. I mean, I here's what I'm saying this to say. In the next few months, I dare say definitely within the next year, the technology is going to be so refined and so much easier to use and so much, you know, 
you know, the, 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 the it's going to be so much more user friendly and the, the, you know, the, the interface is going to be so much, you know, clearer and more clarified with a lot more input. And it's going to be, you know, the products are going to be so much, you know, um, straight line and, and it's going to be, you know, a lot easier to read and use these, these, these different, um, these different, um, applications, it's going to, it's going to really, it's going to really raise the game a lot higher, but what's going to happen is we're going to start to sort out who's actually a writer and who's not. I mean, you can still, you can still tell the difference, but here's the thing though. These technologies are going to benefit those of us who do this on a regular basis. Those who don't do it are probably not going to do it anyway. You know, there's not going to be a whole lot more, you know, influence coming from, you know, those who are not writers and so forth. But for us that are writers, this is going to help us to really elevate our game in the, in the, in the writing game. So we have to look at it like that and we have to look at it like, OK, this is an opportunity that I can't sleep on this technology. Now, I have to include this into my process and I have to you know, grow with it as it grows with me. And then I can you know, take you know, advantage of and, and benefit from it as I progress further. So, you know, if you're a writer, if you're thinking about writing, if, if, if you haven't, you know, you know, given it much thought, give it some thought, you know, play with some of these technologies because I'm telling you. They are very, very helpful. They're very, very useful. And like I say, not just for the writing, but also for the illustrations, because I, I, the ones with the pictures, I mean, I'm having a lot of you know fun, you know, generating a lot of pictures that didn't exist before. But you got to, you know, you got to play with technology so you know what's going on, you know, because the reality of it is, is, you know, the technology is only as good as the input that it has. And so you can see right now that in the infancy of a lot of this technology, how there's still a whole lot of bugs to work out. Because even though there's it's billions of data points, billions of data points that it has access to, it does not have all the information that it needs to really produce the products that we would want to see right now that we can just, you know, you know, lay our lay our hat on and, and be extremely comfortable with. I mean, here's the thing. If you're not an, if you if, if if you're an artist, you can tell immediately you know, when you look at these illustrations, oh, that is, you know, not correct or or something is missing there. You know, you'll be able to see and you'll be able to see, oh, they just took a lot of these different pictures and they stuck them together. You know, that's really not, you know, you know, that's really not artistic. But here's the thing. As this technology refines over the next few months and over the next few years, it's going to get a lot more cohesive and it's going to be a lot, you know, it's going to be a lot easier for us that you know, I'm not an artist. I cannot draw. I mean, I can draw stick figures. That's about it. But, you know, somebody like me, I'm going to be able to input as best I can the description of what it is that I want. And this AI is going to be um, so, you know, so useful that it's going to be able to, you know, produce the picture, you know, that I want at a high quality. And this is going to happen pretty soon. So just, you know, just be aware be aware that the technology is officially here. And for, you know, those of, that are creatives and those that are, you know, writers, those that are artists, you know, I implore you definitely tap into the technology if you haven't already started using it and just see where, you know, where it adds to the thing that you do and doesn't take away. And this is happening all across the spectrum, not just in writing, not just in, 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 um, in, you know, artistic, um, you know, endeavors such as, you know, painting or, 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 um, you know, graphics design or, you know, anything like that. It's also happening in music. You know, the music industry is, you know, really kind of leading the forefront on a lot of things, you know, and when it comes to AI generated, you know, music, you know, and songs and, and, and just the whole, the whole gambit, everything is officially able to be done by AI on top of whether it's even a robot that can perform it and or write it and or illustrate it which is very interesting, but stay aware, stay aware. That's the key thing. Stay aware, utilize the tools at hand for the new world that's being built right in front of you. And, you know, you want to be part of the building. You don't want the building to occur. And then you have to be subjected to the, the building. You want to be part of the building. So be part of the building, get your hands in there, start touching stuff, enjoy yourself, make it a part of your process, add it to whatever job you have right now. And just, you know, really, you know, you know, become a part of, of growing with the process. And I mean, the AI is here to stay, folks. It's here to stay. So, you know, just tap into it, start utilizing it. And hopefully this makes some sense to you. You know what I'm saying? Just a little informative thing, you know, you know, 
been you know creating and doing a lot of things here that's really kind of interesting and so i'm really just going to want to pass that on and have a conversation so i look forward to hearing from you let's talk to you later god bless you welcome to web <laughs>